Owen versus Kent State just came off the opening rush. Looks like we had uh, zero casualties off that. I was just talking to Billy Cameron, Kent State alumni, said that he was filming and commentating the Saginaw Valley Towson game on the court and took a shot and his phone flew onto the court and broke into three pieces. Thankfully, it was easy to put back together. But Billy, we appreciate you putting yourself in the line of fire to bring us coverage of Nationals 2015. We hope you all enjoyed the live streams that we've had available today. Make sure to uh, share those links on Facebook and Twitter. Tell your friends, anybody who would like to watch these games. We'll be doing this to the best of our ability tomorrow as well. So be sure to tune in for day two of Nationals when 16 teams will be well down to one champion. So you won't want to miss out on that. Mr. Men. I did get a confirmed it was a 2-1 Grand Valley victory over Penn State. That is incredible. Penn State coming in as the youngest team, I mean the newest team I should say, taking a point over Grand Valley. Grand Valley gives up a point to UK. Is it safe to say Grand Valley might be a little bit vulnerable? I think they showed some weaknesses today. And teams are definitely going to notice that and look to capitalize on that. But how much of that do you think is Grand Valley underestimating their opponents? I mean, they drew a really cream puff schedule. Yeah, I'm sure they underestimated all of them. And they didn't expect to use a lot of energy to beat them. So I'll tell you what, that Grand Valley UWP game, UWP did not take a point, but there was one time during, I think, uh, maybe the second half that UWP had them on the ropes. Had them down to about four players, and Grand Valley fought their way back. So that easily could have been a point for Grand Valley had they not showed grit and determination and pulled that point out. But Either way, impressive nonetheless, taking a point on Grand Valley. Absolutely. Congratulations to Penn State. What a huge accomplishment. Uh, is this their first Nationals, or were they at no, Ohio they State? No, they were at Ohio State. So this is their second Nationals, but congratulations to the Nittany Lions taking a point off the reigning champions. Correction, they were at Kentucky. They were at Kentucky. They did not go to Ohio okay. State. They were there two years ago. But I still believe, no, well, I guess VCU then will be the youngest team here, the newest team here. It's VCU, I think this is their first Nationals. This is VCU's first Nationals, yes, but they... They, had, they were established before Penn State in the league. So. Gotcha. What, what, six dozen one way, <laughs> or what is it? Six one way, half dozen another. Great, great catch. Who was that, Ryan? Uh, that was Jesse Hilditch. 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 Sure. He's a freshman. Number 77, showing and he, some great he likes hands. to catch. So we're going to let him keep catching. Let him keep on catching. Keep on doing his thing. Which I've noticed that with young catchers, if they start catching real good fast, but then they start wanting to throw... And then their catching starts decreasing because yes. they try and focus on throwing and they want to be a thrower. People see all this power coming from a throw and you hear that boom and they want to feel that and they get away from the catching. It's kind of the, it's kind of the glory. Yeah. Uh, that's the glamorous thing to do in yep. college dodgeball is to be a, a you know, hard-throwing player. But those catchers are without a doubt the most valuable players on your team. It is. It truly is. It's what wins championships. Absolutely true. Well, I go back as we're wrapping up uh, round seven. 
Let's talk a little bit about you serving as our EMT. Thank you again for doing that, good sir. My pleasure, my pleasure. Let's talk about injuries today. What kind of injuries did you see during your during your line of work? You know, having been out of the country for the past couple of years, I've missed quite a few changes. Uh, obviously, the big one for me was the change off on that starting run. Instead of all the balls being lined up on the side, we had a kind of a questionable call here. Someone got hit on the uh, foot and didn't want to admit it. So now we're back in the ball play. Anyhow, uh, not having that opening rush be as violent, obviously we're seeing a lot less contact injuries there off the start. Uh, today we had your basic couple people that got hit in the head or you know were going for a catch and fell over. So a couple kind of people that you know, rang their bell a little bit, but nothing major. Haven't had to contact EMS today yet, knock on wood. Yeah. Uh, but I've been really surprised. It doesn't seem like you know, a couple of small changes that have been made have made it a much safer game. Absolutely. Because a lot of the injuries you would see would be on the rush, and people would knock knees, break yeah, fingers. the vast majority of it. It's those high-speed contact injuries that are the big, uh, the big issue. There. And while I did love the opening rush, mainly for nostalgic reasons, this new one is definitely a lot safer, and I'm glad that we have it in place. I actually think it's more fun. I so? love the new rush. Well, off the rush, you get to kill. I love the new rush. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And and you saw there's one or two players that I've seen on uh, Western's team that are really good at getting in there, getting a ball, and doing some kind of chest throws. Chest throws. I love picking up the balls at the neutral zone and throwing an underhand uppercut kind of throw. No one expects this, and you can pick it up so quickly. And it's just a motion because you're just running that way anyway. Just run and throw. Does that tend to work? It does. It does tend to work. I, I love doing it. I wish I would able to play with it more than one year. And I think we might have jinxed it because Alex is running off potentially to handle some EMT duties right now. So hopefully nothing too serious. We shall see. Let's get a man update here. Ryan looks like we got uh, eight in jail for Kent. Do you count seven on the court? I count nine on the court. Well, then math just does not make sense right now. Nine on the court for Kent. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine for Maryland as well. All right, so we got a nine-nine tie with the man advantage right now. Again, Kent State nursing a two-nothing lead here with 17-20 left in the second half. Great catch there, number four. Matt Rosa, he's another freshman. Freshman playing, stepping up this point for Kent State. Another freshman that likes to catch. Well, that's one thing freshmen can come in and do right away if they haven't mastered the grippy. Yep. Anyone can catch. Is number seven for Maryland their captain? Uh, the pink shoes? I think he might be. I know he's probably their best player overall. He's, ve he's very vocal on the court. Yes. I've just never seen him before, but I also haven't seen Maryland. In I am, I've never seen This is my first time seeing Maryland play. Do you feel like there might be a little bit of frustration right now on Maryland's part? Obviously, it's been a long day. It looks like they might be on their way to 0-3 coming in as a four seed. Do you get the sense that they might be a little frustrated right now? Yeah, I do. I think I think they have high hopes coming into today. And I thought they were riding that emotion pretty well. So I think they're a little bit let down in going 0-3 today, if that's how it turns out. Yeah. Still a lot of time left in this game, 15 and a half minutes. This is a big point. This this point will either bring it back to a game or put it out of reach. Absolutely. Two is tough enough, but one half, three is pretty much impossible. Nowadays. Yeah, exactly. Back in my day, 
We can score three points in about eight minutes. Kent State, though, wisely kind of milking that clock. So even if Maryland does manage to take a point, it's going to be much harder for them to take a second point. Yeah, and Maryland is not a fast place team at all. And that's something that has hurt teams in the league now because everyone pays plays so slow. But when you need to play fast, teams just get sporadic and they can't do it. Yeah. Their communication and coordination breaks down as a team. And you see a lot of individual throws that probably shouldn't be getting made. Yep. A lot of catches from the other team. Tapiro goes down there on a nice catch by Maryland. And a timeout for Penn State. 13.41 left. We'll keep it right here during this timeout. State is going to use a sub. Who are they bringing in? They are bringing in Mitchell Aldridge, who did not play this point, and they have replaced him with Cassie, or other way around. They have taken out Cassie Weaver out of the game. That's a nice little uh, addition by subtraction there. Because uh, I feel like he's one of their better players, Aldridge. He is. He, uh, he, he can have a very hard throw. I, I would like to see him do a full wind-up more often, though. Kind of just uses his arm. Yeah, he kind of yeah. Body. It's a it's very much a full body throw. I feel like from what yeah. what I remember of him playing. It's no disrespect to Cassie that she gets taken out of the game. It's just her experience just isn't there yet in the, for, this, for this type of environment. Yep. You get those kind of substitutions out of your bench. So in a situation like this, you want to try to get someone fresh in there and see if you can continue to milk this clock down or maybe even turn the tide if you get a couple catches. Rosso, you said? Rosso. Going out on a shot to the foot there. Nifty dodging there off the throw by 25. Oh, what an attempted catch there by Greenspan, number 15. Very lucky for Kent State. He yeah, that, that was a gimme. Yeah. Had it, dropped it. Tani going out there on an attempted catch number 25 for Penn State. I feel like uh, Aldridge's arm might be hurting a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry, Dim Harder's arm might be hurting a little bit. Uh, I can see that. He's been throwing all day. He's one of the heavy gunners for Kent. 
So I, I don't doubt that at all. I think at this point, a lot of it too is your hand strength starts to go as you've been gripping all day. Yep, your so hands it, get sore and it's yep. hard to pinch balls. Yep. there by Aldridge. Sorry if you, you all couldn't see that from the camera, but it was outstanding. And then a great head slash neck shot there on Patal. That ball hit floor, so... Aldridge will stay in. Great catch there by Cassidy. 52 taken out there on an attempted catch, and the tide is really starting to turn in favor of the Golden Flashes. I think the player that came back in was hit immediately for Kent State. Really? Number 19 was hit immediately? Yeah, I think he was hit immediately. That's no good. down to 9 minutes and 40 seconds left in the second half. Kent had managed to get Maryland down to five players. So I believe Hilditch got a catch there. I think they are ruling both catches are made. And both players stay in, right? Is that how that works? The no. simultaneous catches, they both go out, they both get people Hilditch in? Hilditch made the catch, but Aldridge made the throw. Oh, it was not Hilditch's okay. throw. sort out the mess right now. Apparently Hilditch had the catch, but Aldridge made the throw, so Aldridge is out. Because did the Maryland player catch that before his ball was caught? I think it was pretty simultaneous. Simultaneous. That it was just too hard for the rest to question it. Which I have no problem on calls like that. Yeah. That's completely understandable. These guys are doing the best that they can. Much. It was just changing players in the half. Yep. That brings back in the team DJ. Was he spinning some tunes for you guys last night at the hotel? Uh, no, he was not at the hotel. Normally every weekend though in Kent, he's at some bar downtown. We all go out to his club. So does he do like the dubstep or the... A little bit, yeah. A little bit of dubstep. What kind of music is his favorite to DJ, would you say? Uh, probably along those lines of dubstep. Maybe techno or... Techno, or, yeah. dubstep. Kind of club music. Yeah, club music. I, I got dancing you. Dancing club music. I don't go to dancing clubs, but I've heard about them and they sound lovely. I've been to clubs since a gin joint back in the 20s. <laughs> That's if right. I have a few martinis, I go to a dancing club. There you go. Just dance your face off, I bet. Uh, uh, hi, go back. Where'd you go? I missed you. Another injury. All right, what happened? Some case before. Heard his name again. He didn't listen to it. That's what happens when you don't take the EMTs of ice and try to play on a bum knee. You hurt your knee even further. All I can do is suggest stuff. Yep. I'm a doctor, but you know a thing or two. So they're both on a 10 second shot clock? Now? They are indeed, yes. Been a long point. Yes, it has. Uh, 20 minutes going on this point. Ooh, wow. 25's Wick gets hit there on a shot by number 77, Hildith. I'm sorry, Hildich. 
And amazingly, Kent State has whittled Maryland down to three players, despite the fact that Maryland held a pretty sizable man advantage earlier at this point. 10 or 11 against five. Looks as if we will have a shot clock violation on Kent State. I missed. No, wait, maybe not. No, I don't think so. I missed what happened. So not sure what happens there, but both teams. Okay, so it is a shot clock. Player. I don't know. That's... It must have been an attempted catch by John Dunbar. It was. It hit him right in the chest. I saw that out. I'm just not sure what Bomas is clarifying for everyone. I guess it was the balls over shot clock violation. Yep. Eight minutes and 20 seconds left in the first, second half as we uh, throw the balls over for the shot clock violation. Big hands, guys. Big hands. Great attempt at a catch there by Hildich. Sinclair and Cassidy, the two remaining golden flashes. Sinclair was holding his shoulder before that. I'm sure he's not really wanting to throw too much at this point. He looks pretty done. Yeah, his arm looks pretty shot. And that's what great players do. When your arm's hurting and you don't feel like throwing anymore, you make a catch. Another shot clock violation on Kent State. We are down. Think the ball has to get there. I think that's what he just told them. The ball has to get to the other player at the 10 second mark. Hmm. I didn't know that was the case. I thought it had to. I thought it had to. Which be some people that would leave you throwing at eight seconds. I'm gonna plead ignorance because I have not read the updated rule book. But I always understood I mean, it to be. I thought, be, I thought the ball had to leave your hand by 10 seconds. <laughs> But I tend to take Bomas' word for it. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt here. Ooh. I'm down hard on the basketball court. Ryan, does it seem like at this point that Kent may be trying to uh, bleed out the rest of this game and survive for another six and a half minutes? Yeah, they definitely don't want to give this point up. Who knows what could happen in five minutes? But they will not take their, they will not go hard trying to win this point. Yeah, just try to survive at this point and uh, keep Maryland from getting that uh, that first point scored. That's a great, that's a huge kill right there. As it is now down to one Maryland player versus three Kent State players. And a balls over shot clock violation. I'm saying this will probably not end well for the remaining Maryland player. And I think Maryland losing that second player was big. Yes, it was. It frees Ken up to be a little more, uh, not as hesitant to attack. Well, it seems like when it goes from even two players down to one, the swing is just tremendous. You kind of shift into overdrive a little bit. And you just want to finish this guy finish off. Finish it off, yeah. 
You're not scared because you're not. There's no cross court. That's probably what it is. It yep. eliminates the threat of the cross court. You know where the ball's going to come. Exactly. From. They can only come from one place. And he is eliminated. Kent will finish off this 25-minute point with 5:46 left in the second half. Kent State claims a three-nothing lead. We'll be back one way or another if they finish up this game, which it looks like they're going to. So we'll be back here for point number four or five, probably the final point of the game here in just a few moments.